Hey, everybody. Thank you all for being here. Today, we're talking about 3D in construction. Let's set the stage before we begin. In this presentation, we are only using videos and images rendered directly out of the Blender 3D viewport from the default camera and the default view. And we're only changing, as you see in the screen, as you see in the screen recording up here, a couple of the factory default settings to set up our scene for artistic purposes. And most controversially, we are not deleting the default cube. <laughs> not yet. In fact, all the objects, the only two objects you're going to see in this entire presentation are the default cube and the default camera. All other objects are being instanced onto the default cube using this geometry node setup right here. And any transformations being done to the cube are being handled by a separate geometry node. This means that all the beautiful mesh data and the object properties of the default cube remain untouched and unharmed. All right, let's talk about 3D in construction, starting off with who we are. My name is Daniel. I've been using Blender since February of 2020. I have made at least one donut. Um, and I'm using Blender to develop an explorable Dunder Mifflin experience at DunderMifflin360.com. Hi, uh, my name is Renzo. I've been using uh, Blender since 2019. My first project was the Ice Cream Cone by CG Geek. Uh, I'm an architect by trade and I focus on visualization and constructions. We both work for a large general contractor called Brassfield and Gorey, and we're both in our virtual design and construction group, or VDC for short. In this presentation, we have four lofty goals. First, we want to introduce construction to those who might not be familiar. Second, we want to explain how 3D is used to construction in general. Third, we want to show how we are using Blender in many of our construction workflows. And finally, we want to explain what the future of 3D construction might hold and how Blender could be playing a huge role in that. Now, we don't have a ton of time, so these first two goals, we're going to absolutely speed run. Starting off with Construction 101. On a, on a typical construction project, there are three main parties involved. You have the owners, you have the architects and engineers who are designing the form and the function of the project, and you have the general contractors, that's us. They mobilize a team of construction professionals to build the project. So the owners are funding, the architects and engineers are designing, and the general contractor is building. All these people have a vested interest in building the project more efficiently, just meaning using less time and less resources. This makes everybody happy, all right? And that's what our department is trying to do by specifically learning and leveraging the latest technology in construction. And this is a tall task because in construction, adoption of new technology just takes a lot longer. In architecture, engineering, and construction, one of the latest technologies is um, the BIM process. Ooh. BIM is where 3D and construction met and continue to develop their relationship today. BIM stands for Building Information Modeling. Simply put, it is the process of digitally describing a built environment. And so really, 3D geometry is only one aspect of BIM, since it's ultimately just a database describing our built environment. But BIM is thought of a lot of times as just 3D information, even if that's a limited understanding. So BIM is not equal to 3D. But the answer to how 3D in construction is generally used is actually pretty similar to the answer of how BIM is used in construction. Architects and engineers are designing in BIM programs, and this generates a rich 3D model. They then take sections of this model to generate 2D sheets at different levels of the project. Here are all the standard levels of the default queue, for those of you who are wondering. General contractors use this 3D model and we run something called BIM coordination. BIM coordination is essentially like having to solve a giant 3D puzzle with the pieces being architectural, structural, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing models on the project. You'll often hear those last three referred to with the acronym MEP. At the end of this process, trade experts, also called subcontractors, they get 2D installation drawings that should be, in theory, 
clash free and constructible, which just means able to be constructed. And that's one of the main reasons we do BIM coordination is so that we can make sure the building is able to be built before we go build it. Whew. All right, and that leads us to how we specifically at our company are using Blender in many of our construction workflows. Now, we don't doubt that there are a lot of general contractors out there utilizing 3D in very similar ways, but we're here to talk specifically to what we're doing and what we're hoping for in the future. We're gonna start off with Renzo sharing some of his awesome project visualizations. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, so what we're gonna see next, this is our first uh, project using Blender. So we usually fly the drone on a site specific and we use uh, an add-on for FSPY for camera matching. And in this case, we create a construction sequence out of the schedule and the design intent for the project and the client as well. Uh, we done that several times. So this is for one of our um, science and technology projects. Uh, and we show the client the amount of reduced parking he gets on the expansion of the project itself. Uh, from there, we move into uh, camera tracking from the drone fly. We keep it very simple, just a short video and just the geometry for the steel fa fabrication or the specific structure. Um, so next, we did a uh, construction sequence. So just using uh, uh, the visibility properties of the mesh specifically from the, the scene in, design intent. So the main camera, it was rendered in cycles and the other three below were done in EV uh, for future purposes. And we started using the compositive tab to create the entire video. And we use photogrammetry from the drone fly for the context of the final video. Uh, and currently we use in um, for marketing purposes. So we just, in this case, this is a project in close to the airport. So we just fly very low uh, on one of our projects. We take the design intent from the client, the architect, and then we change the overlay and the opacity for what is currently in the process of the future project. So in this case, it will show uh, the future structure and the foundations of the future warehouse. So we did it for the same project in two different shots. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Renzo. All right, let's move from those beautiful images we just saw all the way back to BIM coordination, which I just mentioned earlier. Typical BIM models lack critical detail for clash detection and constructability review. And having this detail is key to a successful coordination effort. We are using Blender to develop workflows and tools to help us quickly generate this detail. Majorly, we're using geometry nodes. Now, quick note, there are visual scripting tools in many BIM programs, but they are not nearly as performant or as flexible as geometry nodes in our experience. What you have here is a corridor during the BIM coordination process. You have doors, you've got some steel beams above, you have structural foundations below, with MEP systems running in the ceiling above. On the face of it, this looks like a fine design and routing for the system shown, right? Until we start adding in detail for constructability review, we can add king studs to our doors, which are required to run from the frame all the way up to the deck. We can add fireproofing to our beams, which is spray applied after the beams go in, but before the MEP systems. And we can add zones of influences to our foundations, which represent the extreme pressures underneath our buildings. Once we add this detail, we immediately see that our design might need to be reworked and tweaked some here, and we can do that. These are just a few examples of some easy geometry node setups that we can leverage on our projects. Now, I know a lot of you love nodes, and some of you might be offended with how bad these are, but here's the three we just shared. And I'm confident that with, um, if we're wanting to represent a condition on our projects, that we can do so either partially or wholly, with enough nodes and enough noodles, as you see in this horrible, horrible mess, to create the king studs. Another success we found is the ability to communicate complex real world events. This video here is a few snippets of our safety series we created using Blender. At our company, safety is one of our top values, and by recreating these hazardous events to share, we've been able to learn and grow from our mistakes together. 
it's always, it's really always very interesting to hear what people are like most impressed by with these videos, whether it be this dude just falling right through the floor here or um, this very large buck hoist coming down and crushing a boom lift while somebody's in it. Like this all really happened. Um, and these animations are very simple from a Blender user perspective. This is just a couple of shape keys being animated over time. And all the characters and character animations are coming straight from Mixamo.com, which as you know, is free to use. It's awesome. Um, that's Pete. Pete's in all of our videos. All right, that's not all the ways we use Blender. Um, so I'm just gonna list out a couple of ways here. We use it to texture, model, and animate GLB files and export for mobile AR experiences straight out of Blender. We use it to import and export other file types that you might not think, and it actually works better than other softwares like even SketchUp files or point clouds. We use it to generate assets and asset libraries and share throughout our company. We use it to make pre-construction tools for quantity takeoff or parking lot estimation using geometry nodes. We use it, um, Blender GIS, to create quick 3D site context with satellite imagery. And we take our BIM models and we optimize them, we export them as STL files, and we 3D print them for clients and for teams. And we animate and export USD files for use in other pipelines, such as Unreal Engine. Shout out to Riley Brown for his incredible tutorials on Blender and Unreal and just all of his content is super high quality in general. And we use Blender for something else that we find in the next six months or that you all in the community share and we integrate into our process. That's one of the most amazing things about Blender is that we have such an awesome community that is sharing in its ideas and creativity. All right, what's next? More tools and more workflows, of course. And we're always going to be finding ways of using Blender's old and new features in many of our construction workflows. But one of the things that excites us the most about the future of 3D construction is that Blender might be playing an integral part in that. And that's because of the development of Blender BIM. What if I told you that Blender could audit and analyze BIM models, comparing versions, merging and separating models, and performing clash detection. What if I told you that you could, that it could generate 2D drawings? Sorry, what if I told you it could author BIM models, didn't say that, with a variety of modeling methods such as parametric modeling? What if I told you it could generate 2D drawings with dimensions and callouts and tags and be able to export them for viewing in any 2D viewer using the SVG format? What if I told you you could generate testing models and view structural analysis? What if I told you it could perform costing and scheduling, being able to view and animate these schedules in 3D? What if I told you that it could export critical facilities management data? Well, it can with BlenderBIM. So, what is BlenderBIM? On BlenderBIM.org, which is unsurprisingly where you can find this, it is defined as an add-on for beautiful, detailed, and data-rich open BIM with Blender. Simply put, it's an add-on that's authoring a native IFC. And IFC is just the open source standard for doing BIM. Seriously, go learn more about Blender BIM. And if you wanna scan this QR code, you can learn more about IFC from the creator of Blender BIM himself, Dion Malt. Keep in mind that this is an alpha software and it's developing quickly, so it will only grow in its user friendliness and feature set in the years to come. And one more thing I'm gonna note about Blender BIM is that it's actually bypassing Blender's native geometry representation system and is using Open Cascade to view, edit, and create geometry, which just means it's acting as a CAD program at that point. And not having CAD functionality is one of the roadblocks for many to using Blender. The architecture, engineering, and construction industry is going through a cultural shift right now towards more open source pipelines. And this shift is being led by many nations and firms around the world. And you can find out more at osarch.org about this. This cultural shift though is also seen in the tons and tons of letters that customers are sending to their BIM software suppliers outlining the shortcomings in their BIM programs. 
And this is also seen, the cultural shift is seen in the general sentiment that users have towards traditional BIM softwares, which has not been one of innovation or excitement for some time. So there is a desire for a truly free alternative. And that freedom is not just about cost. The four user freedoms of open source are, one, the freedom of the user to use the software however they want, two, the freedom of the user to learn and modify the software however they need, three, the freedom of the user to distribute the software to everyone and anyone, and four, the freedom of the user to share improvements with all so that everybody benefits. The goal of open source is to free the users. The goal of open BIM is to free the data. When you marry these two up, you get true interoperability and collaboration, which is desperately needed in the AEC. All right, I know I've just said that cost is not the main issue and it's definitely not, but cost can still be a barrier for some to doing BIM. I have a very popular BIM package here on the screen. I've blurred the vendor for the utmost of privacy. Nobody will ever guess who that is. Um, with Open BIM and with Blender BIM, you can start doing and learning BIM immediately without having to consider paying over $10,000 to use proprietary software for just three years. All right, we have talked about a lot right in this presentation and your mind might look like this right now. Ideally, you've learned something interesting in our time here. Hopefully this presentation leaves you excited that Blender is being used for so many things in so many different industries, including construction. Now, if you want, and we're pretty biased, we think construction is pretty cool, go learn about construction. Go support Blender and support Blender BIM. Thank you all. Oh, oh, sorry. Don't forget to delete the default queue.